What's up, everybody? Welcome to Jacksonville, Florida at night. Now, this city at night scares me absolutely. And I'm in Atlanta at night. I'm in Miami at night. I'm in all these cities at night. For some reason, Jacksonville really terrifies me. I don't know if it's my past experiences here at night or just the fact that the last time I was in Jacksonville, I had a really bad experience in the daytime. I didn't upload that because, you know, I, I just, some things I just don't upload. Um, but Jacksonville is a city that at night is scary. In the daytime, it's scary. And it's different than other Florida cities. I don't know how to explain it. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm in a lot of dangerous cities at night. Even Birmingham, Alabama is pretty dangerous at night. I'm in there at night as well. But I don't know what it is about Jacksonville. You know, the last time that I was here, I had a really nasty experience in the daytime. So, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous. But let's get out there and let's do our thing. Let's explore the city of Jacksonville at night. <clears throat> Even though, um, for the most part, the city terrifies me. And I like Jacksonville. I come here a lot. And like I said, you know, if you look at the crime rates in this city, they're not the highest of all. You know, but I just had a really nasty experience here at night already. And it's just once you have one not nasty experience on town, it kind of like forever taints your feeling about that place. I was in a neighborhood and I got I got followed by cars and I made evasive maneuvers and they just kept following me and following me and following me. And I've had that happen in Miami too, like many, many years ago. I just want you guys to know if you're watching this video, uh hit the like button and thank me for what I do for you guys because what I do for you guys is at times extraordinarily difficult. It's uh one, almost one in the morning, it's twelve forty seven almost one in the morning Jackson was a little different than other cities man it's like like Miami you can be up all night because Miami you got vibes you got people partying like you could literally like drive through Miami at night and you're good but out here like when I'm out here in, in Jacksonville I'm just in a different level of alertness I don't know why Let's go for a ride. And I think too, like, I gotta switch up the type of car I drive because the type of car that I drive, I, I mean, I don't feel like it's a problem for me because I don't, I just, I like, you know, I like cars, you know, I like wheels and stuff like that and all that, personal preference. But like today in America, man, people are so judgmental and when they see a car like this, you know, they just, they just assumed the absolute worst. So, um, like right now, my pickup truck, I got that one really tuned up, but I keep that back at home, you know? That's in the garage, man. You know, you gotta keep that. And in my hometown, I'll drive around those cars, but around here where I'm not familiar, like I gotta get a car that's like, when I'm not in town, I'm out of town. I need a car that's like a complete, um, a square car, you know, like a little uh, Prius or something. Just a car that doesn't denote uh, any particular type of like, it doesn't look masculine. You know what I mean? Because when you're in these Yukons and these 2500s and all these cars like this, they just denote masculinity, bro. And sometimes that is not really the best vibe you want to be pushing when you're out, you know, in unfamiliar territory. But, anyways, beyond that, um, I like doing night drives a lot. I think these are all sensor lights. I mean, they, they, as soon as you pull up, they change. Yeah, these are all sensor lights. We, we start our tour right outside of downtown, and we're kind of heading into the city. Um, Jacksonville has great areas, let me tell you, but the city core is very dangerous. Very, very dangerous city core. There's great areas in Jacksonville by the beach and stuff like that but it's weird like every time i come to jacksonville it's like once you get like into the habit of going to a city and every time you go there you encounter the same exact situations and it's like you know it's like that's just uh that's how it rolls around here you know, whatever the problem might be it's just that's how it 
it goes. You know, like you go to the city, one thing happens to you, and you're like, okay, whatever. But you go back to the city, and the same thing always happens to you, always happens to you. Like, hey man, like for real, like again. But I like driving to cities at night, man. But like it's weird because Miami and Jacksonville, in reality, on paper, they both have about the same type of crime rate. But I go through Miami. Maybe it's because I'm from. It's your backyard. You know what I mean? Like you feel for like I, I could be in Miami. And I could be up all night. And I know there's stuff going on in Miami, but I'm not really phased or concerned by it. Like, it doesn't really bother me at all. Like, I could be in Miami, and it's like, whatever. But it's just looking here. I haven't seen a single car, like, literally, like, like literally within, like, my proximity. Like, if this was Miami, we'd see hundreds of cars out and about, you know? That's what's strange about Jacksonville, man. Like, if this was Miami, we'd be seeing like hundreds of cars out and about, like, even though it's one in the morning. Which street is this? Hey, let's go this way. And it all blocked off. But as you can see, like, literally, there's nobody out here. And that just kind of denotes possibly danger, in a way. Um. That's what's weird about Jacksonville. Like, you know when a place is bad, bro. Like, you just, you just know. Like, Birmingham, Alabama is the same way. Like, you go through Birmingham, Alabama, there ain't nobody out there. Like, Miami doesn't matter. Like, Miami, you could be out in Miami. Like, even though, like, on paper, they have about the same crime rate, you could be out in Miami at night, and it's really not a big deal at all. Like, we, we, like I feel normal. Like, I'm at the point where, and I, and I go to, like, Liberty City and stuff like that. And, and stuff does go down in Miami. It's just like, yeah, like I said, like on paper, it's the same thing. But in Miami, like you got more tourists, you know, it's more of a touristy city and you, you just feel calm. Well, it's like Panama City Beach and Daytona have really high crime rates and people go there on vacation without a single thought in the world. But then when you think about bigger cities and people get scared, it's weird. So now we're northwest of downtown, so these areas here are just uh, definitely not the, not the best. Stop here on red. You gotta be kidding me. I hope this is a sensor light, bro, because I don't feel comfortable here at all. I'm gonna move back into the town, actually. Like, literally, like, we've been going through these streets, you literally don't see anybody, bro. And if you see people, like, they're on foot, they're not driving. Dude, these sensor lights suck. Do people even stop at these lights here? I'm not, I don't know if people even stop at these lights, bro. I guess they're all sensor lights. When you pull up, they change. This is a bad little area right here. There's a car. <clears throat> This area is really bad. This street right here is one of the worst streets in Jacksonville. I've done videos here in the daytime. That's what's eerie about Jacksonville, bro. Like, you come out here, it's like, and if you see people out, like, sometimes, like, last time, I did it one time, I don't think I uploaded it. I might have, well, I don't think I did. Like, when I see crazy stuff, like, that's really crazy, then I won't upload the video because I don't want to, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to, you know, I, I do my drive around videos, but if I really see something crazy, I don't really upload it. If it's interesting and odd, I will. But if it's like legitly like like stuff that can get people in trouble, I don't really upload it. I'm not trying to, I'm, not, I'm just trying to do some YouTube videos. I'm not really on anything like that, you know what I mean? So I just do my videos and can go home safe. <laughs> but um, last time I was here in Jacksonville, there was like groups of cars like flying 
like you know like like a caravan of vehicles flying all together and i was like nope you gotta really pay attention out here Yeah, definitely. I just did some videos in Miami. Very different from Miami in a lot of ways. In one particular way, Jackson was different from Miami. It's literally like there's like literally nobody out here. Literally nobody out here. funny because this street right here Moncrief a bunch of other youtubers have done videos here um, from other places you know like you know all the traveling youtubers who do videos in different places and they've all done videos here on Moncrief I'm talking like from Charlie Boo I think um I think most of the YouTubers have done videos here. Most of the bigger YouTubers have done videos here at night. Not at night, but in the daytime. This street right here on the left is pretty bad, 36. Right down there, that's crazy back in there. They say that uh, right now, real estate prices, like, not real estate, but like, rental prices in Jacksonville have shot up, like, incredibly, incredibly high rental prices. Like, 30, 40% increases. Um, it's already happened the rest tampa i've seen it miami seen it orlando seen it jacksonville hadn't seen it and it's starting to see it but i don't think what they were able to do in miami and tampa and orlando i don't think it's going to happen here in jacksonville as easily i really don't I mean, they've been able to gentrify it like all those other cities but jacksonville i don't think jacksonville would gentrify that either. i might be wrong who knows at least along the, i mean because this part of florida is actually pretty nice like from daytona to here you got daytona st augustine jacksonville beaches these are all some pretty neat little areas along the beach you know i wouldn't mind living in this area i just like i feel like there should be like a city in the middle like where palaka is would be a great place for me to be but the thing is like Palaka is still at heart a little country town, you know? And, uh, you know, I need to have... Um, <laughs> Starbucks, Whole Foods, Publix. Um, just a different type of suburban life, you know? Like, Gainesville is... It's like in the middle. You know, like this was not quite, quite, quite. This was not quite there. Let's see if I can turn around somewhere. Now, what you gotta really be careful at night is going in the back streets. Like, if you stay on the main streets, I think you're okay. Um, my mistake when I did the other video was that I went in some back streets. That was just a fatal mistake to make. In the daytime, I went in some back streets, and it, it was a bad move. A bad, bad move to make. Going in the back streets, you gotta stay on the main streets. This one is what is this? Uh, and I leave Katie at home. Normally, I have the map with me with Katie's here, but I, I'm leaving Katie at home. Not at home, at the hotel. So I'm not bringing Katie on these late night drives anymore. I don't want to put her in the predicaments that I have to be put in. The only other city that I've seen more empty than this at night is Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee at night is empty. 
nobody is out of Memphis, Tennessee at night. And Memphis and then Birmingham. But that should just kind of give you an idea when you see a city that's empty at night, how bad it is. I mean, I'm telling you, like Memphis and Birmingham are really the two other cities that I've seen. This car behind me is flying. I'm gonna have to speed up. This car behind me is coming at a pretty good speed. I'm sure like he's flying. The car behind me is coming pretty good. He's gonna pass me either way. Yeah, driving to this city at night is just terrifying. Just having a car behind me makes me nervous. But as it happens, like once you like like once you've been through a few scary experiences out in, in big cities, like you kind of just become paranoid all the time. Like a car behind you may not make you nervous, but once you've kind of been through whatever, yeah, that car is just terrified too. He just flew. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, these big cities, like, when you see big cities and they're empty at night, it's a bad sign. Like, when people are out and about at night, like, it lets you know that people feel somewhat safe to be out there. When you see big cities and they're empty, like, the only cities that I've seen empty like this are Jacksonville, Memphis, Birmingham. I can't really think of another city that this late at night is this empty. And the real mistake is what I'm doing right now, getting off into the back streets in the smaller neighborhoods, like, off the beaten path. That's definitely one you don't want to do. You want to stay kind of... stay uh, for the main roads. And once you get into these back streets, I don't normally like to drive fast, but I'm driving fast. And you'll notice too, like whatever cars you do see, like they're moving. I think I'm on 45th, let me see. I don't know what crap, I'm heading west. See, that's the thing, I think I'm heading, I'm heading west. I don't wanna be heading west, I wanna be heading south. Street is this? Come on, forty fifth. Okay, I'm on forty fifth. Okay, forty fifth. We're gonna head south now. Yeah, these are some of the worst neighborhoods in Jacksonville. You definitely don't want to be out here at night. It was weird. It's like a lot of the other YouTubers. Like, let me ask you a question. So I know people are like, oh man, this guy's scared. There's always somebody I can tell. Ah, you scared? Whatever. Okay. It's easy to write that on YouTube, right? But you think when these other like travel YouTubers like me, when they go to places like big cities and stuff, you think they're not scared? Come on, bro. And like every city's different. Like, no two cities are the same. I can guarantee you that. No two cities are the same. Is a place called Cleveland Arms? It's supposed to be really bad. Is this it right here? I think this is it right here. His apartment. I've never been to it yet on our show. There's an apartment complex called Cleveland Arms. And I hear it's supposed to be like really bad. I think it might be on. This is called Cleveland. Like Cleveland Arms. Okay, what street is this? 30. If the number is true, we'll take it out. But it's hilarious because there's always been like, oh, why? Wow, look at him. He all scared, man. He all scared. Okay. The other thing, too, is like, what car are you driving? Because, like, let's say if I was driving like a 96 Cavalier, I wouldn't be scared of anything. <laughs> if I was driving a 96 Cavalier, ain't nobody going to take your 96 Cavalier. That's the thing, too. Like, there's always people like, man, I drive through here at night all the time. I ain't never scared. Okay. You ain't never scared in your 96 Cavalier. Hop into a 2500. Where the rims are worth six thousand dollars or five thousand dollars and tell me it feels the same as driving your cavalier because it don't stop saying that. some apartments over there they look pretty sketchy and oh the time i got into i'm, I'm not i don't know if i'm gonna upload the video i might let up like a ear so i'm gonna let some time pass before i upload this video 
So like even the people that were in it forget about it and then I might upload it. The thing about the video with the last bad experience that I had here in um you see how fast people drive at night? Like people are just wherever they're going, they're going. They ain't playing around. They're not taking any chances. People are just going. Wherever their crap they're going, they're just going. I have a map to know where the crap I'm going, but I don't have a map today because, um, like I said, I, I left Katie at home. <clears throat> Car parked there, no lights on. Could be a cop. Could just be somebody doing something creepy. All right. It's like the, there's, there's people like, oh man, you know, man, I ain't never, I ain't scared, but you're in a '96 Cavalier, my friend. It's like if I was in a '96, if I was in a '96 Cavalier right now, I could literally stop in the middle of the road with the car on. People would be like, "Poor guy," you know. He's in a '96 Cavalier, so that's the one thing that's like really true about like about being out here. It's like, what are you driving to? Because if you're like in a '96 Cavalier, ain't nobody gonna take your '96 Cavalier. Don't nobody be want, don't nobody want to be seen in that thing. Okay, so. What you drive makes a huge difference. Like sometimes, and that's something I, I gotta switch up. This Yukon is really, to me, it's a conquer. Cause I mean, you know, to me, this car is a conquer. But to somebody that's broke, they might look at this Yukon and be like, oh man, look at that Yukon. You know, so like, I gotta find a car that looks more like a square person car, you know, and, like, and have that be my travel vehicle. Have the square car be the travel vehicle. What street is this? We gotta have something more. I think a Prius would probably do it, but I don't know. Then I don't know, like I, I, because I don't even do it on purpose. But like I realized, like when I had this this same exact vehicle, right? I had it in Alabama. When I lived in Alabama, I had this vehicle, and what was weird about this particular vehicle is that once I got the wheels and I did the lift kit on it, I'm sure this is more grief. Walking is a bad street, but it'll get us. It's at least in the major street. Man. A little back street scare. I, I'm more scared of being on these little tiny streets than being on a major street, to be honest with y'all. Because the little back streets only to bother me. Once I just hear it's like a big street, you know? But when I when I put the lift kit on the car and I put the big wheels, like it really it made everything go to crap. Like, like it just it, it looked aggressive. And it's weird how like when you like when you're out, let's say you're out walking through the city streets, right? And you see a car pull up and it's got big wheels, it's got a lift kit, it's got some mud grips on it. Like it looks aggressive, so you assume that the person who's driving that vehicle is aggressive. And that's a very interesting thing. Like if you drive an aggressive looking car, people are just gonna assume you're aggressive. Even if you're not aggressive, they're just gonna assume you're aggressive because, well, your car looks aggressive, right? That almost makes sense, right, don't it? But if your car looks soft, then people just assume you're soft. And that's kind of a weird thing. And I, I guess like the real, to me, the real danger isn't being victimized in big cities. Like, and I've already been to Baltimore, I've been to New York City, I've been to Albuquerque, Denver, uh, let's see, uh, Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, I've been to the Mexican border, um, Chicago, Detroit, Louisville, Memphis, Nashville, Washington, D.C., Baltimore. Like, we've been to most of the big bad cities, you know, Birmingham, Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama. We've been through all the places. Um, MLK, I'll take MLK just because there's a, some type of road blogger here. They're all detoured. I love how I, in my head, I, I planned out what I was going to do. And then I get on the ground and there's a detour. But, um, you know, all them big cities, right? And everything was smooth, man. You know, everything's good. Like, when I had the new truck for a while, I had the new 20, 21 Silverado. And that truck was a square truck. Like, people, like, I would be going to places like, yo, nobody even notices us. Now, 
it is a more expensive truck too. You gotta be careful with that. That was like a fifty thousand dollar truck. You have to be much more careful with a brand new truck. That, that is true. You have to be more careful with a brand new truck. But it, it, it was a square truck. Like, what you don't want to do is you don't want to, like, portray, like, look like you're aggressive in the big cities. Like, if you just look like a square, because if you look like a square, you're not going to hurt nobody. And what I've noticed in all these large cities that I've been to um, is, I think this, this I got to get on Main Street. South on Main. Better find Main Street. Boulevard, where's Boulevard? I'm already on this side. Well, anyways, I don't want to end up in Arlington. Um, I think if this might keep going straight in Arlington, if I remember. But what I was like, in all these big cities that I, you know, driving through all these big cities and all that, what I've noticed, Main Street, there we go. What I've noticed, dri driving through all these big cities and stuff, is, um, If you look like a square, like you don't look aggressive, you'll be okay because victims, you know, like, like when you're a victim of a crime, nobody's really, really looking for like weak people to target. Like most real criminals are looking for uh, other aggressive looking people. So if you're trying to perpetrate that you're a gangster by the way you rig up your car, and we've kind of talked about this on my channel, I don't do it to perpetrate that I'm a gangster. I do it because I like it, but it doesn't look good when you're in a big city, man. It really doesn't. And I recognize that. Like, I really do. Like, I, I recognize that my sub personal selection of vehicles um, is just draws bad attention. And it puts us in danger. Because I, I've come to learn already that if you, in most big cities that I've been to, ain't nobody trying to victimize you. You are more likely to be mistaken for another rival then you will have a problem because if you look like us you can drive into the most messed up neighborhood if you if you look like a square or like you're in a work truck or you're picking up scrap metal or something you can drive into the most bad neighborhood and ain't nobody worried about you but if you drive in the neighborhood and people think you're being aggressive or you're a rival or something please believe you're gonna get chased down. And when I, I've had four or five really scary circumstances where people have seen me drive by and then they follow me. And in every single one of those circumstances, what has saved me has been putting my windows down, putting my hands on the steering wheel and just looking calm, you know, uh, what, I've, I've never been in a circumstance where I thought pulling in on somebody was going to make anything better. I was in Birmingham, Alabama one time, and it was me, Dad, and Katie. That was probably one of the scariest. Dudes see us pass, they get behind us in a Yukon. You know they got it. They got the sticks on them. You know that was pretty scary. They're probably going to try to take a car. They thought we were rivals or something. We were out, you know. I put my, I rolled my windows down. I, put, I told everybody to look calm, just keep your hands where they can see them. And they checked us out and they changed their mind. Like if they wanted to blow us to pieces, they could have. But again, it's all about do you look aggressive? If you look aggressive, you're going to have like consequences and repercussions. Like even like the way you drive, the way you act, or, you know, like there's a mannerism, a way of carrying yourself that doesn't really, um, like right now, I'm doing the way I'm driving here. Like it's just like the way you carry yourself. Like somebody can be watching, be like, oh, that, that looks normal. Or somebody could be watching and be like, yo, that is super suspicious. Like even here, I'm doing some, something ridiculously stupid. I'm driving around like an idiot. I pulled in here for no reason, but that's not a problem. And there's people on the sidelines here watching, but that's not a problem. Um, it's not that you look stupid. It's just how you go about it. Like I don't even know how to explain it. Like if you look aggressive, you are much, much more likely. Um, you know, if you're looking at people too, that's another thing. Like I've learned how to like avoid situations. In, in most circumstances, if people are following you, they're on point, they're ready to go, and they're probably not. Hopefully, probably not gonna make a go at you, unless I'm sharing this information in case like you ever end up in a big city and something bad happens to you. Like looking bad and aggressive, or you know, pulling it out or whatever. That's never ever gonna work in your favor. 
never. There's no circumstance where you putting up a, an aggressive face is going to make crap better. Like I've, I've been in like several situations, and in most situations, it's been confused or misunderstood circumstances where why are you here or why did you roll up to here? They want to see who you are. Um, like the last time I was in Jacksonville, that's exactly what happened. They just wanted to scope me out, uh, but I lost them. In that circumstance, I really, I lost them. I was like, I'm gone. But Jacksonville's a, a beautiful city, man. Like, it really is. And, um, but I'm showing you guys these neighborhoods because that's what you... If I upload driving around Riverside, I did it. I did River and Riverside. I got, like, 500 views. And there's always people like, oh, why do you always show the bad neighborhoods? Like, yo, I do show the good... I would rather show you the good neighborhoods. I don't want to be showing you those neighborhoods and stuff. Come on, man. But it doesn't really get a lot of views. The moment you upload, like, something like hoods and stuff, like, people want to see it. People want to see that. People like it. I don't know why, but they do. Like, I just recently had a conversation with a friend of mine who was telling me that, like, there's actually people who like living in bad neighborhoods. Like, they don't want to live in a normal, they don't want to live in a safe neighborhood. I'm like, and I'm like, yo, I, it's true. Like, they like the adrenaline of living in bad places. Me, I've, I can't deal with it. I just I become paranoid and I go crazy. But in my circumstances and, and, and that I've been in, there's times when I do decide, like if I feel like it's really gonna happen, then I do run, I flee. I fled twice from people following me, but but other times, like if I feel like like they think that they're just concerned, then then letting them scope you out is not a bad option. But if you get the opportunity to flee, flee. That's like, like well, I think in the, with the Jacksonville situation last time I was here, I drove through. I drove into a neighborhood that looked really bad, and I was recording. And these dudes came after me. I was like, oh crap, they're coming for me. Yep, they all hopped in the car. They pointed at me. They all hopped in the car, and they start to follow me. They followed me for f 12 to 14 city blocks. That's a lot to follow somebody. 12 to 14 city blocks. So like. Okay, now they're following me. But when I saw they got caught up in traffic behind me, I flew out of there. And I, you know, drove, drove the wrong way. I drove like a maniac and I got out. But I guess it's just advice if you're ever in these circumstances of like city driving or anything like that. For the vast majority of the time, I'm telling you, just don't. Like most cities, like I even, it doesn't matter how bad or dangerous the city is, there's just one simple rule. I don't even have to say it. You can write it down yourself in the comments. You know what it is. If you mind your own business, you're going to be okay. That's a long way. If you mind your own business, you're going to be okay. Just mind your own business. It's a cop. <laughs> yeah, it didn't go that way. <laughs> when you're a cop and a car flies in the wrong direction. Just mind your own business. It's that simple. If you just mind your own business, don't make eye contact to people. Don't, like, you know, just mind your own business. You will be okay, like, 99% of the time. And like I said, like, most of the time when I've had problems where people follow me or whatever, is because they confuse you with, like, somebody else. Or they're worried. They're worried about their safety. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's not that they're trying to hurt you. That's one thing that people don't understand about bad neighborhoods. People think, oh, but if you go to bad neighborhood, people are trying to hurt you. Nobody's trying to hurt you. But people are considerably concerned for their own safety. So if you look threatening, your vehicle looks threatening, your mannerisms look threatening, please believe people are going to be concerned about you. Is that awesome? And again, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just having this conversation. I don't even know why I'm having it, but I'm having it. I guess we got to talk about something while we do this video. Might as well talk about that. But. I know somebody in the comments. Man, look at this guy. He's scared. He's scared. He's scared. If you're going to say he's scared, just please do me a favor. If you're going to comment, he's scared. Next to he's scared, let me know what you're driving. <laughs> okay? And you say he's scared and you write Ferrari. Okay. Uh, he's scared. Don't come up in here with a he's scared and then write 1996 Cavalier. It's not gonna fly, my man. 
Nobody's gonna take your 1996 Cavalier. Come on, man. You know nobody's gonna go for that. But yeah, if you've wondered about, because I've had a lot of people tell me, you know, um, I want to move to Jacksonville. It's like Miami. It's like Orlando on paper. I'm like, no, no, it's not. If you drove right now at 1.20 in the morning through Miami, there'd be people walking around. There'd be restaurants open. Um, the same thing for uh, even, I don't know, Tampa. Ah, Tampa's a little nocturnal. I don't know if I can say Tampa. I don't know if I can say Tampa. Tampa's a little nocturnal. Tampa's us a little nocturnal, I'll say that. But, like, Orlando, there'll be area. Like, if you were in downtown Orlando right now, there'd be people out and about. Like, if you were in downtown Miami, there would be people out and about. Hotel. There would be people out and about in Miami. Is this a one-way? No, they're out and out. These one-ways confuse me. With as much city driving as I do, you think I'd figure out by now? I don't. I don't really think, because I do freestyle drive. This is a one-way. It would be nice if we went the other way, but we can't really do it right now. That looks like a one way. Where's the pattern? Uh, oh, if you look at the sign, it has signs too. Okay. All right, a bus lane. Okay. So I'm in a bus lane now. But, you know, if because uh, I've had a lot of people tell me about Jacksonville, you know, they don't understand that Jacksonville is very different from Miami, Orlando, like the southern part of Florida, like it's not the same. This is part of the south. Jacksonville's got more in common with Birmingham, with Atlanta, than it does with Miami. You know, it's a different type of city. It is definitely a different type of city. Downtown's pretty at night on the other side, but. Um, Show you guys kind of more on this side. Very different city. I have to admit, Jackson was a very different type of city. Um, real estate prices are different. Um, a lot of different. Quite a bit different. All right, guys, checking out. I'm gonna have to figure out how to get to my hotel. I'll figure it out. Checking out. 